What's up all? Some of you that own Sun Systems may receive an error message every once in a while. NVRAM invalid or invalid checksum or ID prom invalid. In many cases this means that the clock battery inside your NVRAM chip has failed. And while this is a solvable problem, as you can see from this NVRAM chip it takes a little bit of actually chipping away at the potted casing to get to the old batteries at which point you have to cut them and disable them. Now from what it appears there's actually two of those batteries in there and it looks like they're actually on separate circuits so in this case what I've done is I've took out the one side, the far side from pin one and cut through the potted material and put a coin cell battery holder on the top glued it in place and soldered some wires up took a brand new battery plopped it in there and now we're good to go I did the ID prom reconfiguration and then stuck in a Solaris CD so it could set the date and time and start the system clock again so we should be all good now I'll go ahead and do a reboot to verify this works and as far as uh, actually reprogramming the ID prom I'll post a link to a guide that I followed that allowed me to do that <coughs> And as you can see, one, no goofy error messages, other than it's going to complain because the network cable is not plugged in. We'll do a stop A, do a little IB prom check here. and it shows the correct date and time. So now since this system's been booted I haven't actually powered it off and unplugged it. So let's go ahead and do that now as a final test. So now that we're off I'm actually just going to go ahead and unplug the machine from here and then hit the power button a couple of times. You can see that I actually discharge the capacitors inside the power supply. So now the system has no power left over in it whatsoever. Only the clock battery that we replaced should be holding the ID prom contents. So now let's plug it back in. Flip back to our And here we are. I don't see an immediate invalid ID prom or checksum or anything like that, so seems like we're doing okay. Yep. And we'll do a boot CD ROM here. Just to show that it does go to my CD. There it goes. I never noticed this on my Ultra One when I had it long, long ago. But when I was running this machine just for the few short minutes that it took me to reprogram the ID prom, I noticed that this section of integrated circuits here got really hot. Now, in the world of chips, if it's too hot to hold on to, it's too hot or at least in my opinion. And yeah, they can definitely go a little bit above that temperature range that you would consider too hot, but it's generally not good for it. They don't last long. So if you have one of these machines in your collection, I definitely advise putting some heat sinks on these, this area right here. These five get the hottest. These two being the hottest out of the bunch, the Motorola chips, and then the ones marked beginning with UC. And this... Uh, FPGA or whatever that is hiding back there also gets pretty hot but not as hot as these little ones here in this group so 
just a quick tip keep it cool so if you have any questions feel free to leave me a comment doogielabs at gmail.com or visit my website www.doogielabs.com until next time take it easy <laughs>